Hello Internet, I'm Jackie Fox, and as you can see, I'm going to be testing out Elena, Sylvie, and Addison Ray at 140. Now, I have Elena in my first slot because I want her to start out with hate. That's going to be able to get this first uh, soul regram on her, and the buffs focus a little bit more in her direction, as she is going to be my main DPS. Um... My climb through arena, the fights that I felt most comfortable with, with this team, as I think probably a lot of evasion teams would feel, is lightning and water often. Because it can take a little bit of extra effort, at least, to build these teams for <clears throat> accuracy. And especially if you're fighting more physical teams, because I do have more physical um, barriers. I do have a protect caster within this team. And also, against a lot of the physical teams that are set up to fight other physical teams, we can really do some pretty crazy extra damage. Um, against teams that aren't expecting to go up against mages. Um, for instance, Vega especially typically wants to be fighting physical teams because of the way that his barriers work out. And there you see the reason why I have so much trouble turning off White Mage for Sylvie later in this video. Because, good grief, those full lives are pretty frickin' impactful. Now, Raise, that's definitely something I probably should have turned off for Arena sooner. That can be useful in Guild Battle, but Arena, not necessarily. It's a best of one format. If your full life didn't seal the deal, you were going to lose that one anyways. Uh, you know, if you can't do it in full four, four, four full health units against three, you weren't going to win. We are having a bit of trouble with accuracy and range though, so Setia can be a little bit of trouble, but it's important to remember that Terra's ability to terrorize Elena previously was kind of dependent on her sure hit abilities. So, Soul Regram is going to be pretty impactful for helping Elena avoid Meltdown. That being said, she's pretty much the only evasive unit on this team, so... You know, everybody else is probably going to be getting hit most of the time. And again, since this is more of a versus physical build for the overall team, it's going to be a little bit harder to deal with Terra when she can connect. One of the benefits uh, to having Sword Song formation on for Addison Ray is that it will keep her from using Soul Regram twice in a lot of cases. However, personally, in Arena, I think that's a bit of a disadvantage. Why not go hard all the way? Now, I don't know necessarily how I feel about Soul Regram hitting Sylvie. I almost wish that Addison would cast it on herself instead, but she's got that negative hate. So, I guess not. Maybe I could give Sylvie negative hate and that would help, but... Um, since I've started uh, playing her with that on her, no one has actually taken her that far uh, to be able to get her courage to proc, I think. So win for that I guess okay so this is gonna be one of my first edits to the team and I'm kind of wondering why I think I'm wondering why she's not using bunny loving lass to get additional hate down and I guess I figure that that's got to be sword song formation it's not <laughs> But this does end up being an improvement, at least for Arena, and this is something that's important to understand about her AI and the various PvP formats. If you're going best of one, she may as well use both casts of Soul Regram on your team. If you're 
going to be in something like guild battle where you're trying to make it two or more fights you want her to probably use soul regram on an important unit once per fight right so that you are saving cast for later also i do want to point out i'm not sure how important or helpful it necessarily is but I do have Elena's Courage buff. I've tempered my resolve, turned off for this. Um, I don't think that she would have an opportunity to cast it before getting Soul Regrammed, so it may be kind of redundant anyways, and it may be worth leaving on for that reason. Maybe there's an opportunity for her to use it later, especially in a guild battle sort of situation that makes a lot more sense but in this case, I think it's perfectly fine with it being turned off because she is getting a source of courage elsewhere and she's getting a lot more with that courage that's helpful for her than I think like critical evasion and something else. Maybe accuracy. Accuracy might be helpful, but I'm not necessarily fighting evasion. So it's not that big of a deal. And I've seen 140 Elena be pretty accurate. I mean, if you... Uh, I've got a pair of light luck cards on this team so she is about as lucky as she's gonna get um and then add to that the accuracy buff from her 140 and she's just pretty good at hitting things in general so this is where i realized that She's just not going to use Bunny Loving Last. She's going to use instead Soul Regram twice, and then she's going to be in range to start going to people's faces, which is what she's going to want to do. Also, just look at that clean KO on Summer Helena. Absolutely wrecked. It's also worth noting that the LBs between Elena and Addison Ray stack with each other. So you can get it to the point where if you focused on agility for your team, and I do have two agility cards as well, if you focus on agility for your team and you're already using relatively fast units such as these, then you can easily get to a place where if you can land both of those LBs on a lot of their team, you can probably lap them with everyone you've got. And with as much chaining potential as this team has, well, that's just going to be uh, a really disastrous scenario. And besides, these are already, I think both of them are three hit LBs. So anyone who catches two of these is probably dead anyways. Maybe they had some courage or some re-rays that kept them in here, but... I'm turning Rhythmic Fake off because I am running her at 80% Spirit Penetration. So having her, giving her the ability to reduce Spirit doesn't really make a lot of sense, especially with the move that she seems to be using as a finisher. Like she's she's building up a chain for her own damage to cap, um, which usually means that she's taking somebody out with it. And yeah, that, that does mean that it's a pretty powerful part of her kit, but also that you know negative spirit isn't really potentially benefiting Elena if it were a spirit buff that I thought would help Elena who has a bit of spirit penetration herself um, I would be more into it but really it's the finishing move that she likes and I would really rather her use a lot of other things than that So here's one of the other team archetypes I think that this team does particularly well against. Now, again, a lot of the tech in this team is going to be um, anti-physical, and this is a more primarily magical team, um, just because water, as usual, is in a bit of a uh, renaissance of magical characters with Celeste and Miranda being recently upgraded and uh, surprisingly accurate, both of them, for this team. Uh, Perim can definitely get there eas more easily, but I would have assumed that Miranda was needing to rely on her guaranteed hit more. Or I'm not counting turns well and the sure hit avoid is already gone.
in any case, it is still good to see them matching up with teams like this well. And even a team like this that's purely magical, that because especially for the more magical water teams, they really are leaning into their guaranteed hit to be able to hunt evasion. And a team like this, maybe with the exception of Celeste, but it's always good to have a tank there even if they can't really hit well, would be a pretty decent team for hunting a more traditional evasion setup. But again, as long as, uh... See, we got one turn on Soul Regram. Let's actually count our turns now. Two turns. Sure hit avoid was kind of irrelevant for a taunting spell. Three turns? So she should be guaranteed hittable now, I guess? Maybe I don't want her getting soul regrammed first. Maybe giving her hate is not what I should do. Although, like, if anybody, I guess it should be her. I don't necess- I mean, like, one of these is a negative hate unit. I wonder what would happen if I did that, though. Ooh, bodied twice. So, now you're gonna see the unfortunate side, the downside to the, the amazing power that is full life. Um, in that it's really easy to heal spiral a Sylvie. <laughs> Yo, hold up. I wasn't gonna record any fucking audio until afterwards, but holy shit. <laughs> I can do this! She sure fucking can! <laughs> oh, but for real, I think I'm changing her to Blade Soul. The thing is, she's such a good healer that she can kind of tank through it sometimes. Sometimes. Um, it depends how powerful your opponent is. Uh, there's definitely a lot of units that can't make it through that. Especially with her being the 120 on the team. But, again, I guess she had more HP than Miranda did because when you have a one unit versus one unit tie like that, the winner's decided by who has more HP. And given that she had just healed herself with her LB, it was definitely max. Now, she only has like 7,472 HP, so that's not a lot. Uh, which makes this a really risky move and a good reason to move into Blade Soul. Maybe I should train her with some more espers, but I'm not really seeing one that feels better. Even though she doesn't really have casting times in this sub job. Which is really one of the bigger reasons that I would run Siren. Although, um, Siren is pretty fast, so that's also good for her. How to grab a screen cap of this to send to old Swan Princess. Thank you so much for helping the channel in the background. You were very helpful and I appreciate you. Um, but also this is, if nothing else, a good example of teams that this team just does absolutely poorly against. Um, and that would just be anybody who's got a high accuracy damage dealer. But also, we do get bricked walled pretty hard by Warrior of Light as well. And it hurts, man. Guy's an animate HP bar. Even if I maxed out, I wouldn't be able to take him down with one hit quite often. Even without courage. <laughs> He has pseudo courage in that respect, and that heal just makes it so much worse. Got 
but we do have the agility down, slate wiper, so we're not stacking LBs yet. Barely did any damage, but he did start a really scary chain for Stern, especially with them standing in a fucking row like that. Thankfully, thankfully we sure hit avoidance, or at least, I don't know. Somehow Elena managed to avoid that one. Didn't so much manage to avoid that one. We are doing decent damage finally against Warrior of Light, but no, no, we just got bapped. Also, wow, they're, uh, they're Addison Ray for being like level 79 or 89, did a lot of damage there. So it looks like we're going to have to restart that uh, win streak all over again. Fun fact, didn't realize that Sylvie's sword also worked for red mages and rune knights. That's pretty cool, actually. So there are other units for which this would probably be a best in slot. I just never realized it. I thought it was kind of just for her. Other than being like the sword version of the whale whisker. That is actually a pretty decent reason to pull her. That's a good unique sword for a lot of units. Unfortunately, Elena's sword doesn't feel quite as useful, although it does do quite a bit. It's got accuracy, evasion, and agility, which is just nutty. And I keep wanting to turn on Empowered Performer for Addison just because Fascinating Twirl is really, really effective when it lands. Um, it's also probably one of the better things that you can do with a lower level Addison Ray if you're just kind of running her as a bonus unit and you haven't decided if you want to invest in the Addison Ray yet. Uh, this is also the point where I realize, you know what? Um, regardless of how good some of these bonuses may be, I might want to switch around my <laughs> vision cards a bit and I'm realizing that I think I put two oh no no I realized that had to stay up front I just put it on the healer I mean she is a damage dealer but it's it's probably not terrible that I gave her a little bit of attack instead of magic I, I think she'll survive meanwhile Addison Ray often slaps with her damage so giving her the magic card out of this was was a good idea but I, I really think that um, Chaos Bahamut is probably a strong enough vision card just in general that it's beneficial to have on this team even if it is uh, giving Sylvie attack instead of magic. So here, let's take another physical team a lot more up our alley. Uh, we don't necessarily have anyone with high accuracy moves here. Um, maybe, uh, maybe Lightning had one. I don't remember exactly. She would have been kind of early for that mechanic, although it was on a couple moves uh, sooner than I would have expected. But mainly the way that this team would naturally interact with an evasion team is through the guaranteed uh, flash kick, armored flash kick I think, um, off of Alphonse and the guaranteed hit skill on Vega. And then just kind of hope that lightning hits them in general. But with sure hit avoidance, they're going to have a little bit of trouble doing that, and that's not going to be great for them, um, especially with them getting caught up. And I want to say I have never seen that slow not land on everyone. <laughs> it is a really impactful LB, and it just fuck shit up. <laughs> um, like as you can see, he, he, Vega landed the berserk on Addison. She doesn't care. She's still slapping. Uh, and we're just wiping out everybody else on the field. That was a pretty easy match for us. Ooh. 
Looks like I accidentally deleted the intro for this one, but this is another lightning team, but much more magically based. It seems... I'm not going to spoil it. So as Alphonse just starts getting way up in my face, and surprisingly, despite all of their haste, they're still just rats in a cage. Despite all my haste, I am still just a rat in a cage. <laughs> I'm still just armor in a mine. No, that was terrible. Okay, and this is also one of the most aggressive Resonics I've ever seen. Like, I... Maybe this is why you... I don't... <laughs> it just doesn't seem like a good plan when the unit that is notable for being a powerful DPS is in the back, hasting your other units, which are known for being tanks and healers. Like... Using your DPS to get your tank and your healer forward doesn't seem like the best strategy. Especially when this guy seems to be pretty accurate, just naturally. Um, so they've probably built him well for that, but he's just gonna get wiped. And there's really very little to nothing that Resnick can do about it. I'm not sure she could even hit Ella if she wanted to. And she's gonna get tag teamed against Sylvie or you know, she's gonna have to heal Spiral while Sylvie heals Elena and Elena kicks ass. Just no way that would have worked out, even if it hadn't gone to time. But, let me leave you with this. This is one of the most interesting fights and one of the more interesting use cases for Addison Ray that I have ever seen. It is a little bit outside of the box. It doesn't quite work out for them, but I'm just not gonna spoil it. Um, be sure to check the description for a link to a whole lot of places within the Jackie Fox media empire. It's not just woe of videos. I write books. I have other channels. I do podcasts. So connect, uh, check out the discord link in there. If you want to reach out to other woe of fans or other Jackie Fox fans and I'll see you in the next one. Also, let me know in the comments if you want to see me try to get further with this team in Arena. I'm certainly going to put some more effort in before the week is over, but I don't know. Do you really want to see how far this team can go? Are you interested? You'll have to let me know in the comments. Let's go, partner. By the Azure Crystal. It was a pleasure fighting at your side.